In this video, I will teach you how to solve the 4x4 cube or the Rubik's Revenge. It works somewhat the same way as 3x3, three three, except sun centers aren't always opposite each other. For example, red isn't always opposite orange, but when the cube is solved, red will be opposite orange because of the corners. Now, I'd say this is about the same difficulty as 3x3, three three, so if you can't solve the 3x3, three three, really, you should not attempt this. It, it is a little harder because it uses more logic than algorithms. Um, there are only about two new algorithms you need to know for this. Some of the others come from solving the 3x3, three three. Um, such as the corner placement algorithms. I'll give them to you anyway in this video, but I don't think I need to explain the notation. I will use some special notation while solving this. Since I think it's too complicated to write out middle left layer, upper right layer, I think that's really confusing and a waste of time. Um, I just use arrows. I think arrows make it a lot easier. So, to begin, as usual, choose the side you want to work off of. Just like in 3x3, three three, I choose to work off the green side. Now, there are no center pieces to find in this, no main center pieces they can't move anyway. So, look around and locate the four green centers. Okay, there's one of the centers. But let's see if we can find two of them that are next to, next to each other. Nope, none in this case. Now, this beginning part here is really all logic. Just like getting the green cross on 3x3. Three three. Um, if you're fairly advanced, you should be able to do this easily. Uh, if not, I don't recommend this cube for you. So here we have, let's see, where did it go? There. With just a few twists, you should be able to get the centers. Now to get the bottom centers, it requires a little less logic, and I guess you could say some short algorithms, although I won't be giving you the notation because it's pretty simple. Now, since you can't just turn, like here's the center, you can't just turn it up, because then it brings the green centers up. You can't have that. Instead, what you do is turn what's called a center slice down, then rotate your center onto that center slice. So you turn it down. Now on the back side, you have the green centers that popped up. Turn the center down. Here's your center. And then turn that center slice back up. What that did is it put the green centers back in place. Sometimes you can rotate the center so that you put them in two at a time. There I have two blues next to each other. Here's where they want to go up here. So turn this slice down. I'll turn the front face twice. And bring it back up three blues up there, bottom is still intact. The last one is a little tricky. What you do is sort of get it to the side, if it's going up there, here's the center slice you'll turn, you go right to the side of that. You've got this corner up here that will go next to this piece. Watch. See how they're next to each other? Now we'll rotate this face. You have the green on the back, and when you turn the center slice up, brings the green together. Now for the next part, all you need to do is get the corners. And once again, this is just logic. You know, it shouldn't be any problem for you if you've come this far. Let's see. Another corner. There. Now we have four corners. For the other corners, you will want to use the algorithms for the corner placement that you used in 3x3 three three if you're using the green cross method, which I recommend. Since, uh, since some of you may not have used that method, I'll give you the algorithms anyway. I recommend writing that algorithm down if you haven't memorized it already. So what that algorithm does is it will get the corners in their right location. And what you need to do here is turn the top face top side here so that one corner is in the right spot. Let's see. There we have orange white, orange white. And ooh, see here's a good 
example where we have two opposite corners in the right spot. Look head on at one of the right ones, perform that algorithm, you shouldn't be twisting any of the middle layers, just the outer layers. Okay, now we come to a situation where there are two in the right spot. This happens sometimes. Just with one or two twists, you'll be able to turn the cube so that only one is in the right spot. Perform the algorithm. If you want, you can figure out the mirror version, which will do the same thing, but it will rotate the cubes clockwise instead of counterclockwise, like that one did. If you don't feel like doing that, just do the first algorithm once or twice, and it will get the corners in the right spot. Then, you'll use the following algorithm to correctly orient the corners. Uh, once again, try to write that down if you haven't already memorized it for solving a 3x3. Three three. Find a corner that's in the correct spot, or turn correctly, rather, meaning the blue faces up. I have two in this situation, and all I do is ignore them. Turn it so you're looking on one corner, and I'll perform that algorithm. Once again, no centers are being twisted, so not getting very complicated yet. You'll have to perform that algorithm either two or four times. That corner's in place. Rust looks messed up, but it's not. Don't lose track of the face you started on. Turn the top until there's another new corner in place that needs to be turned. Did the algorithm once. And after two times, the top is solved. Rotate the bottom layer until all corners line up. You now have all of the corners in their place.